Welcome to Lecture 4 of our AI YouTube Channel Guide Series. Today, we're focusing solely on Oppenize DALI, a groundbreaking text-to-image generation model that's transforming digital creativity. First off, what is DALI? It's an AI model developed by Oppenai that turns your textual descriptions into vivid images. It's a game-changer for content creators. But how does it work? DALI is an advanced AI model capable of turning text into diverse, high-quality images, including imaginative and novel visuals, by understanding and processing text descriptions through complex AI techniques. Now, let's create our image generation engine. Go to openai.com and on the side panel, click on Explore and then click on Create a GPD. I'm going to call my engine Leonardo. In the Configure tab, I'm pasting a set of pre-written instructions for this engine. You can obtain this notes from this lesson notes image generation model engine instructions. These instructions will help the engine have a mental model on how to develop image description for better results. Now, before we start generating images, make sure the Dolly image generation option is selected under capabilities in the configure tab. We will start with a prompt letting the engine know what will be the focus of the interaction, in this case image generation. The secret for great images is great descriptions. The machine doesn't know what you didn't tell it, so you need to be as specific as possible. As you will see, even when we are specific, the engine might fail to generate the images we want right away. But with chat fine-tuning, we can push the limitations really far. First, we start asking the engine to generate a small island in the Caribbean. And as you can see, I went on and described a full picture. Thanks to this rich description of the image we wanted, we were able to get great results. One good tip to generate great images is to close your eyes and think about the image you want to generate. Once you see the image in your head, start describing it to the engine. This way you will be able to avoid forgetting important details. For the first image, the engine performed great. We need to let the engine know that it did a great job. Not because it needs compliments but because whatever it did resulted in a great generation and we reinforce good results to increase the possibilities of good results in future generations. Now we will prompt the engine to generate a vector image of a lion where half of the lion's head is artistically depicted and the other half realistically depicted. Side note, a vector image is just the type of images used for logos, icons, illustrations, etc. As you can see the engine generate an icon of a lion but it quite did not understand my prompt. It might be because of my prompt was poorly put together looking back at it. We need to make sure we are crafting clear, logical prompts, so the machine has a better understanding of the task at hand. Regardless, we can always fine-tune their answer. Since the generated image is not exactly what we wanted, we will follow with a prompt letting the engine know we wanted an icon of a lion, but not with the style it generated. The engine gave it another try. But it appears that we are still not being crystal clear with our prompt which confuses the engine and creates another bad generation. So we continue to fine tune and let the engine know what we like from this failed generation and what we don't like so it can work on a better generation. Finally, after some back and forth with the engine that understood what type of image we wanted to generate, we now positively reinforce the engine with a great job and prompt the engine to work on the next task. An image of two gladiator fighting in the ancient Roman Colosseum in front of thousands of spectators. As you can see the engine did a great job with this one from the go, but it did overpopulate the arena, so we prompt the engine to place the audience on seats in the arena, and the second generation accomplishes that. We then prompt it to generate a Julius Caesar image. We did not add a lot of details in this prompt, but since we have already fine-tuned our engine, it kind of knows what type of images we are trying to generate. The engine is performing well at this point, but we can always improve it. For example, we now prompt the engine to generate an image of a victorious gladiator standing tall next to his defeated opponent in the arena, and it generated exactly that. But if you look closer, it added stadium lights to the Colosseum. The problem with this, we're generating an image depicting ancient Rome. Electricity has not been invented. So we go back and forth with the engine letting it know what elements added to the image that did not make sense in the generation. So the engine generate a new image removing these elements that did not belong there. But it forgot to add the defeated opponent. So we let the engine know that it missed an element in the latest generation and voila, the image got the generation right. 
We will now use this generation in our faceless YouTube channel profile pic. Go to youtube.com. Go to your channel. Click on Customize Channel. And under Branding, click on Upload Profile Picture. Select the picture you just generated and upload it as your profile picture. After updating your profile information, you need to always remember to publish your changes, else the changes will not take effect. Sometimes the channel takes a minute to update and show the picture you just uploaded, but no worries, it will show in no time. Now we are ready to start uploading content to this channel. On the next lesson, we will focus on planning and mapping out the content for our channel.